Okay, so what do we have here? We have a pair of nearly identical Ken Smith BT6 bases. So do you want to see a direct AB comparison between two made about 22 years apart? So do I. Now, of course, Leo Fender was credited with a modern electric base build and not much changed until the late 70s when there were these crop of builders that came up together on the East Coast. Guys like Roger Sadowski, Vinnie Fodera, Ned Steinberger, Stuart Spector, and Ken Smith. And Ken in particular had a big influence on boutique base design. I believe Ken Smith was the first guy to use center detent pots. He also came up with the top loading bridge so you're not right like stringing strings through a fender style bridge. I wanted one of these since I was a little kid. I used to buy the strings. That was all I could afford and they would be on the packaging of the strings. A photo of one of these bases and I would daydream about having one. And now this one here is mine. This is a 2012 21 Ken Smith BT6 made by Brubaker because recently the manufacturing has shifted over to Brubaker. But this one here belongs to Mr. Scott Devine. I bought this one. I think Scott got a little jealous and he pulled the trigger on this. Now this is a 1999 Ken Smith BT6. And you can see the body shape is very similar. The electronics, like the pickups are similar. The woods, mm, the woods are actually very different. And I thought it would be so interesting just to compare these two. Now you probably already have some ideas of what you like better, which one you like better. I'm not gonna tell you which one I like better till the end of the video. All right, I'm gonna put this one down for a sec. Oh, <laughs> like they each weigh, I don't know, probably 11 or 12 pounds, something like that. This is Scott's BT6 and you can see it has this top made out of Murado, I believe. And then I think it has a mahogany core, has these beautiful maple stringers, but you see the neck through body situation here. I took the cover off of the controls here because I needed to replace the battery. You see this has the original nine volt circuit. This one has the smaller headstock and it has an ebony fingerboard. Now in terms of electronics, the bases are nearly identical having volume, pickup blend, bass, mid and treble. But Scott's has these two switches, which I believe are series parallel switches, but I'm going to leave them in parallel, which is like the standard Ken Smith configuration. Ugh. Now here is mine, the 2021. This has walnut facings here, but the same neck through construction. You can see the preamp is totally different. This has an 18 volt circuit. You see this beautiful block of maple through here, this wide neck. This is actually slightly wider than Scott's, but front to back, it's a little bit thinner. And we've got the big headstock, which I actually really love. They both have that great volute on the back here. Now this one also has an ebony fingerboard, but it's a little more stripey than Scott's. Both pickups. <laughs> Neck pickup. Bridge pickup. And to me, these instruments just have such a thumbprint sound. From the in-house pickups, in-house preamp, to the way they're constructed, a smith sounds like a smith. In particular, a six string bass just fills you with imagination, or at least it did me when I heard John Patitucci play his Ken Smith six string bass on his very first instructional video, I was hooked. <laughs> are so cool because they give you an extra low string and an extra high string. So it's like more bass. You've got B, E, A, D, G, C, all tuned in fourths. So you totally avoid that odd like G string to B string thing that happens on a guitar. And they just helped me as a kid think more compositionally on the bass. So amazing about 
about the six is that extended upper range, right? Playing chord shapes like this, hearing that sort of like major nine sound, and then putting different bass notes under it. Ugh. How about putting a low B under it? Putting an A under it. There is just so much to explore. Now hearing these things by themselves is one thing, right? And you may already have an idea of which one you like better. In the comments, please let me know which one of these do you like better? Do you like mine better? Or do you like Scott's better? Should we make this like a versus battle? But the proof, as they say, is in the pudding. So now we are going to hear these basses inside of a couple of tracks. So let's hear Scott's vintage 1999 Ken Smith BT6 on a modern gospel track. How can it be? Now how about on a late 90s prog rock opus? And of course, no AB comparison of boutique basses would be complete without a little slapping. Okay, it's time to reveal my thoughts about the winner of the Ken Smith Challenge. I actually think that I prefer Scott's. The 99, ugh, kills me to say it. But I think I prefer the tone in general of the 99. There's something more open about it and it sounds a little bit more like how I would expect a Ken Smith to sound. I don't even know if that makes any sense. But in terms of my 21, I like playing this one better. It's a little more comfortable to play. The action is maybe a tiny bit lower. It seems like the craftsmanship on this one may actually be like a notch higher, but it's not as open sounding. It's sort of stiff sounding to me in a way, but I hope that over time, the more I play it, the more it will open up and sound more like Scott's. Now, if this video brought you any value whatsoever, please like, subscribe, ring the bell. I have been Ian Martin Allison for SBL, and now I'm gonna stand up and let the blood flow return to my legs. Oh, dear God. <laughs>